What was the biggest bullet you dodged? Story 1. At 17 years old, I met and married a sweet little North Carolina daddy's girl. Had I not, I would have still been hanging with my friends that just discovered H. Of the three friends, two are dead now, and one did 10 years in prison. Everyone I used to know, including family members, got into H. I loved to party and had done all the drugs with them up to the point of H and probably would have gotten into it too if it weren't for my girlfriend at the time forbidding me from it. Thank God I loved her more than drugs to listen to her. A lot of them are dead, my sister and the rest of them are locked up. Story 2. When I was 15, I'm 16 now, I was being manipulated and lied to by a 20-year-old man for intercourse. I brought the topic up so people could give me their opinion and a random person helped me snap out of it. A few weeks ago I talked to the 20 year old and then I completely understood that he just saw me as a walking hole to stick his D in. Story 3. Not my story but a girl I knew had a few drinks and decided to hitchhike home, a town about 40 minutes away from the one she'd been drinking in. Note, it is very common for people to hitchhike in this area. She gets picked up by a car of guys, all seems fine until she points out they can drop her off just up ahead, and they keep driving. She had that instant sober feeling. She plays it off like she's clueless and totally down to keep hanging out with them. Active, like she's very drunk, meanwhile they're back in more forested area of the highway. Then she fake dry heaves and says about to puke, really putting on a show so they stop to let her out. She books it into the bushes and just doesn't look back until she's safe. When I was in high school, we had a cop that come talk to us about what to do if we were in a car with someone and things didn't feel right. They said to use the three P's and say you desperately gotta puke, gotta pee, or gotta poop. And the effer, more often than not, cares more about their car getting soiled than whatever they want to do to you and will let you out. This is absolutely genius of her. It's honestly frightening that she had to come up with that idea in the first place. But it's good she didn't start panicking, giving them the clue that she knew what they were doing. That was very smart of her. I hate that we live in a world where this is something I think more people should know, but this is really good advice for folks. Stay safe out there, everyone. Story 4. I stayed up all night before a day trip to Hong Kong. You know that days when you haven't slept, you're just kind of robotic and doing the human stuff, nearly zero awareness of anything? Well, I went to cross the street and my friend behind me snatched my shoulder and yanked me backward just in time to feel the whoosh of a double-decker bus breezing past us. I just looked at him like, oh, thanks, man. And it took a whole extra minute for my brain to process I would be effing dead had he not grabbed me. I think I saved a baby's life once. I was in a city center crossing a main road with a wild bunch of other people. The dad was pulling the pram behind him onto the pavement while he texted on his phone and the dumb F didn't realize he'd left the pram just there on the road while he himself was on the pavement. Everyone kind of ignored it while the traffic lights kept that section of road clear, but then the lights changed and the effing moron still hadn't looked up from his phone while the huge double-decker was bearing down on his offspring. Out of the whole crowd, I was the only one to push forward and pull the pram onto the pavement. The complete imbecile gave a grunt of surprise and dropped his phone as the bus whooshed past and he realized he'd utterly failed in his parenting responsibilities, which was some consolation. I hope it shattered. Thanks y'all for the praise. I don't feel good about the situation though, just seething fury. And to those who told me I should have let the baby die, go eat a takeaway bag of crap on your way to a therapist. About why the bus driver didn't stop, I honestly have no idea. There were a few seconds between me pulling the pram back and my memory of the bus going by. Maybe he realized it would be fine, or maybe he was driving automatically and hadn't noticed. Whatever, I'm just glad I didn't have to see a baby die painfully that day. The fact that anyone would respond to that person's story by saying they should have let the baby die are the kind of people that make me kind of hate this world. You're gonna make a supervillain out of me, you awful people! Story 5 my high school sweetheart and fiancé was my bullet. He ghosted me out of nowhere, no explanation, just gone. So, needless to say, no wedding. I sent the ring back to his mom because I didn't want it and was peed. I go on to live a great life, find a wonderful guy, and we have been happily married for 21 years. 25 years later, I find out that my old flame had been arrested for underage solicitation, intimate texting underage girls, possession of CP, and many charges of intercourse with minors. 
Apparently, Mr. Big Man and his community was arrested in a sting operation after this 12-year-old girl's parents found a whole series of explicit texts and had found that he set up a romantic hotel room get-together for them. Police pretended to be her, and he was caught in the parking lot of the hotel. Even better, he was married to the same chick he was apparently seeing while we were together and had a couple of kids. All around the same age of his victims. Yeah, before finding all this out, I regretted for a long time that we didn't work. After finding this had been going on for at least 20 years, I was rather glad I got ghosted. Never been so glad to dodge a bullet. You didn't dodge a bullet, you dodged a friggin' land-to-air missile! I'm sorry, do you even have memories of being with a monster like that? Story 6. My girlfriend and I were going to see Cats, the movie. Our Uber pulls up and straight away we notice something about the driver. To this day we can't articulate what it was other than to say he just felt off. We got into his car already hesitating and a touch anxious. He looks at us in the rear view mirror and makes a comment like, Two lovely ladies in my car tonight, or some weird crap. A few minutes in he makes another semi-naughty innuendo comment about riding with him. My friend notices the handle of a knife just poking out of the side of his jacket. She says, Hey, can we stop at a 7-Eleven? We need to grab a Gatorade real quick. So we go in and refuse to come back out. We're considering whether to call the police or not. It was so creepy, but what would we say? Ah, some dude was creepy to us? And while we're hesitating, he winds down his window, brandishes his effing hunting knife at both of us, screams something about devil women, and then just tears it out of the parking lot. To this day, my girlfriend and I are so thankful that we got out of that Uber. Otherwise, we would have made it to the movies in time, and we would have seen cats. Story 7. I was walking down the street in downtown Chicago, and I heard a loud bang followed by a woman screaming. Someone dropped a full two-liter bottle of soda from the 13th floor, and it just missed me. It was essentially a giant bullet at that heightened speed. The woman screaming was about five feet behind me. She was the second closest to being hit. I'm pretty sure that bottle would have killed me if it hit me. One time at school, we were practicing cadences for drumline. A light fell from the roof about 30 feet high, one of those lights with the diameter of a basketball and looks like half a sphere. It hit the ground and shattered one foot to my right. Don't think I would have died, but I probably would have gotten a concussion and it would have hurt a lot. You mean you would have got a concussion playing percussion from a coruscation? I know coruscation barely works in either sense, but you all in the comments try to do better. Story 8. A few years ago I had pneumonia, but my whole family insisted that it was just post-nasal drip which runs in the family. After a week or two I woke up in the middle of the night when I couldn't feel my arm. After I got to the ER, the doctor said that it was the worst he'd ever seen and he was surprised I wasn't dead. I had three pounds of mucus cut out from my lungs and another two weeks in the hospital siphoning out the rest. For three months afterwards, I could barely walk half a mile without starting to pass out, and I still can't run for more than 200 to 300 yards without collapsing. Story 9. Not changing jobs in early 2020. Would have been a short-lived promotion after early restructuring and layoffs. I changed jobs on March 9th, 2020. Two days later, my city shut down and everyone was sent to work from home. My new company committed to zero COVID layoffs. The company I left laid off about 80% of my department. Dodged a bullet. <laughs> Story 10. After I had a stroke, I was in a coma and it didn't look like I'd wake up. The doctors asked my wife if they should let me go. I only exist because she said no. I didn't dodge a bullet so much as my wife blocked it for me. Honestly, this made me tear up a little. Please tell your wife that she's incredible. My aunt did something similar. She saved her husband from a heart attack by using her nursing experience and network to get him on the table before it even started. To this day, even doctors have no idea what caused his heart attack, but my aunt and your wife are legit superheroes. Story 11. My dad was going through a severe depression 10 years ago, and my life was equally crappy for a whole multitude of reasons, and it was rubbing off on me. I spent what felt like half an hour crying on the floor and working up the nerve to pull the trigger. Then when I finally did, the safety was on. I sold my gun the next morning. Wish my dad was able to say the same three years later. Rest in peace. I am so sorry to hear about your father, but I'm glad that one last hurdle stopped you. I hope you've been able to seek help, and I hope anyone watching this video will please, please seek help if they are dealing with something similar.
Story 12. Many years ago, my flight had just landed at Chicago O'Hare and the plane was taxiing when the pilot suddenly slammed on the brake. People were literally thrown forward against the seat in front of them. A few seconds later, another plane, taking off I think, went screaming by right in front of us. No explanation was given, though our imaginations provided a lot of gory details. Just regular Chicago drivers. Story 13. Well, about 15 years ago, I dated a guy for less than a year. It was an awful, abusive relationship, and I was happy to get out of it when I did. About eight to nine years ago, I saw him on the news. He strangled his girlfriend to death. He then dismembered her and lived with her body for a month or so before he was caught. Story 14. Around 30,000 pounds. I was driving with my wife in town one snowy evening, and we had pulled up to a stoplight. I happened to glance up at the rearview mirror and saw a city bus heading towards us and rotating sideways. I hit the gas and pulled ahead into the intersection and left into the turning lane, and less than a second later the bus went sliding through right where our car was. It came to a stop on the other side of the intersection and fortunately didn't hit anything, but one second or two feet difference and we would have had some nice spinal injuries. This is why I'm always baffled by people who don't wear seatbelts and their reasoning is, well, I'm a really good driver. Sure, but sometimes a bus hits some ice. These folks were lucky and a real testament to just how important awareness is when driving, even when you are stopped. Story 15. As a kid, after running errands in town with my mom, I was climbing into the back seat of our family station wagon. A semi-truck hit a power line pole down the street causing the still live wire to fall, bounce off the roof of the car, and hang across the open door just a foot or two above my legs. Raised Catholic, I wondered for a while after if I had actually died that day and the rest of what I thought was my life was my purgatory. Story 16. A friend had lost his job under suspicious circumstances. A few weeks later, he asked me to take him to the bank. As I got near to pick him up, I caught a train. He called to say never mind, he would get someone else. A few days later, a friend sent out a message to a large number of our friends. This guy lost his job and was running a check cashing con. Can you cash this check for me? I'll pay you $50 if you do. The check is $500. He has no banking funds. You eat the whole amount. He did this to several friends in a few days to amass a few grand and was about to skip town when the cops got him. Halfway through this, I was thinking you dodged being an unknown getaway driver for a bank robbery. I was thinking the same, and frankly, I feel a little robbed myself. I hope we get a bank robbery story now. Story 17. Not me, but I had a field service engineer working on one of my big robotic liquid handlers. I decided to bypass the safety pin that prevents the heads from moving while the cover is open while he had a diagnostic problem queued up on the computer. What he didn't know was that the instant he reinserted the safety pin, the machine would execute the queued instructions and start moving, and he had a hand inside it right in the danger zone. I grabbed his shoulder and yanked his hand out an instant before it was crushed. He stopped ignoring me when I told him to stop bypassing safety lockouts to save a few minutes. Wow, I'm sure this guy isn't completely responsible for you guys putting a safety system in place, but it sounds like he certainly had a hand in it. Story 18. My newborn needed to be rushed to a super high-level NICU to be put into a state of induced hypothermia because he only had hours before he would suffer permanent brain damage. I live in a small town in the middle of nowhere. The small town next door just barely upgraded their hospital to have that hypothermia suite, one of only a few in Texas. He's doing great, no sign of any damage. Our daughter is a NICU baby too. The only piece of unsolicited advice I will ever give expecting parents is, when you're checking out hospitals, make sure to check out the NICU and select a hospital with a good one. You probably won't need it, but if you do, you'll be happy it's there. Daughter is now four and a healthy little spitfire. Glad your son is too. Story 19. Was going to move to a different apartment complex last month. Got injured at work and lost hours, therefore couldn't come up with the deposit money in time. Last week, some butt hat was cooking M and caught the building on fire. I've got to say, if someone was getting away with cooking that stuff in the apartment complex, it probably wasn't the best place to move to even if it didn't burn down. Though I suppose maybe you could have got a discount? Ugh. Story 20. Hubs, my sister, and I were hanging out around my parents' house on a very boring 4th of July. We decided to wash my husband's new car sitting in the driveway because it was hot out and an excuse to play in the hose. We were literally walking out the front door and I said, eh, we should eat lunch before we all get wet and stuff. 
and everyone agreed, so we turned around and went back inside. I was warming up something in the microwave, a hot pocket I think, and all of a sudden I hear the loudest bang I think I've ever heard from the direction of the front door. Hubs and I look at each other wide-eyed and run outside. I was greeted by the back end of a Crown Vic smoking something fierce plowed into the tree in the middle of our yard. For a split second I was just stunned and screamed to my sister inside to call 911. I looked over to the driveway and the car we had been planning to wash just five minutes ago totaled. Completely totaled. Brand new 2011 G6 destroyed. Guy hit it so hard it did a complete 90 degree turn across the driveway. He actually hit it so hard it ended up ricocheting and hitting the other cars in the driveway mauling two other cars. Yard was effed. Crown Vic was effed. Tree was effed. We immediately assumed it was drunk driving being the fourth and all. I went over to the driver's side and found a very old man, bewildered, unable to comprehend what I was saying, but conscious. I will never forget the look he gave me. Confused, helpless, scared. I was on the line with the paramedics as they sent over the ambulances and tried my best to follow their instructions. My sister was only 14 at the time, so I handled the call. Turns out dude was diabetic and passed out behind the wheel due to low blood sugar, hit the gas pedal with his weight as he passed out, and was plowing down our residential street at 65 miles per hour. He jumped the curve, drove down the sidewalk, passed another house, then slammed into my husband's car and subsequently the tree. If we had been anywhere near that yard slash driveway, I have no doubt that all of us would have been seriously injured or dead. It was sheer dumb luck and timing that saved us. Huge bullet dodged. Or, should I say, huge car dodged. I will never judge myself for craving hot pockets again. One day, they might just save my life. I'm really sad that the car was a Crown Victoria, a Ford, and not like a Charger, because then you could have said, huge dodge dodged, and won this whole thread. But also, this just shows the importance of never skipping lunch, folks. Skip lunch, get crunched. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 21. I can answer this in a literal way. When I was a child, I was playing video games with my little brother. Well, he found our dad's gun and fired it. No one was hurt, but it scared the crap out of me. My younger brother used to dry fire guns at me till one time he fired a live one right by my head. Dad came home and wondered why he had a huge black eye. Story 22. I survived a rocket attack that landed about 10 meters from me, very close to where we were standing. We were so close to the launch site that the warning alarm came after the rocket had already impacted. Thankfully, we were able to drive under a vehicle for some shelter, and the three of us made it through unscathed. Story 23. There was a pile of stuff that people would leave at our house when I was at university, coats and stuff. Moving out day, we found a random samurai sword in the pile. We were messing around with it, trying to make it go swoosh. I was stood facing my brother while he was swooshing it when the blade dislodged from the handle, flew straight past me, and stuck horizontally into my headboard. So yeah, my brother nearly impaled me while messing around with a random sword we found after a house party. I can hear r slash sword screaming about wall hangers staying on the wall, lol. Story 24. I interviewed for a job that I wanted desperately in August 2019. After the initial phone interview, I went in for an in-person interview at 4 p.m. on a Wednesday. I had a rejection in my inbox by 8 p.m. and was completely gutted. Then, 2022 happened and they laid off 60% of their staff and will probably go under. I'm thankful for that rejection every day. 2020 showed you that not getting a job you wanted was actually all for the better? I guess what they say is true about hindsight being 2020. Go ahead, drag me in the comments. I stand by my dumb joke. Story 25. When my great aunt passed away, I was helping to clean out her house. I'm just dragging everything out of the basement, and suddenly my dad is like, whoa, put that down gently, and let's move away from here. So I put the weird metal tube type thing I'm carrying down and get out of there. Turns out it's a mortar shell from when my aunt worked in ammunitions factory during World War II. Bomb Squad came and took it away. I'm just casually going to take a mortar from work, no problem at all, as you do. Did you ever hear back from the bomb squad about whether or not it was still active? If they took it, rather than safely detonating it, I would imagine it was almost certainly inactive, unless there's more to this story than OP is letting on. Story 26. My mom left me in one state and went back to my abusive stepfather. 
She tried to get me to drop out of my senior year at high school, move back to their state, and just get my GED. They wanted a live-in babysitter cook and maid. I was so lucky my grandparents let me move in with them and finish school. It's always the grandparents that are the true homies. Grandparents have the grim misfortune of seeing their children become complete buttholes and then treat their grandkids the way they wished they treated their kids. Story 27. Freshman year of college, I had a calc class. It was material I had learned before, but for various reasons they didn't give me transfer credit. So I skipped class quite frequently. Though I usually sleep in, one morning I find myself awake at 8.30 and not really feeling like sleep. Might as well check in on the class and see what's going on. It was the midterm exam. As a chronic procrastinator, I've been there, but I've also noticed it a day too late. That feels bad, man. All I can focus on in this story is the fact that this person had to basically take calculus twice, which basically sounds like hell to me. Frankly, if I went to college and they said, you have to take calculus again, I would say, no I don't, and drop out. Story 28. Getting chased by someone with a knife across my apartment. I closed my door at the right moment so that the person ended up stabbing my wooden door instead. The mark was there until I left the apartment a few years later as a constant reminder of what could have been. And why was this person trying to stab you? I'm gonna go with the old classic, what are you gonna do, stab me? Unfortunate, but a good morale boost. Crap, I'm late for work. Opens the door to knife mark. Eh, could have been worse. Story 29. When I was in middle school, I wanted to buy a fedora, but none could fit my head. Euphoric. Story 30. In 1992, I was 16. A bunch of us were about to leave a party, and I called shotgun, but my friend Pat kind of wrestled me out of the spot, and I wound up jumping in another car since the first car was now full. The other driver and I watched as our friend's car skidded into oncoming traffic. Pat was airlifted to the local trauma hospital where his dad told a huge group of us teenagers that Pat had succumbed to his injuries. Maybe that's not exactly bullet dodged, but... Similar story, I was going out with my mom and sister when I was in about middle school. I always sat in the passenger side back seat if it was more than me and the driver. My sister decided at the last second that she would stay home. And we got T-boned on the way home in a hit and run. The other car totaled our car with all the damage on the back passenger seat where I should have been sitting. I still think about that often. I prefer the driver's side with the assumption that the driver will be more aware of and responsive to threats on the same side. That thought has guided the placement of the car seat for my kid's entire life. Cars are so dangerous, folks. Like, I drive, but every time I read this stuff, I think about how much I wish I didn't have to. Story 31. Almost proposed to a girl who had been cheating on me with a pile of crap that called himself my best friend. This was years ago, and I'm getting married at the end of the month to the love of my life. Life has a way of working itself out. Story 32. I had a cardiac arrest about four years ago. Dropped deadish in the middle of my shift. Found out after I woke up about a week later that A, the manager who saw me fall was a former lifeguard and knew proper CPR. B, an ambulance happened to be passing about two blocks away. C, probably the best cardio unit in my state was 10 minute ambulance ride from where it all happened. Walked out of the hospital about two weeks later, full recovery. Just before starting high school, I got hit by a car doing 35 miles per hour while riding my bike, T-boned. My bike went under the car, I was thrown up, smashed the windshield out with my back, was flipped over the car, and landed a perfect no-hop landing on my feet like a gymnast, minus the arms raised flourished at the end. The entire accident was witnessed by a firefighter who was watching out his window, literally standing right next to his emergency radio, and called for an ambulance. The lady who hit me got out of her car yelling, I'm a nurse, I'm a nurse, lie down! I had no breaks or fractures, just a bruised rib cage. Story 33. A literal police car. The police were chasing someone and I was crossing the road and my dumb butt was walking slowly and the police car nearly grazed me. Look both ways and take off your headphones when you cross the road, kids. Story 34. 792 Mauser rifle bullet. When I was 15-ish, I was very depressed and got very drunk, found my great-grandfather's World War I captured German rifle, found some bullets from that time, loaded it, and put the rifle in my mouth and pulled the trigger. Thankfully, the bullet was not loaded properly, slash was a dud for being 90 years old at the time, and did not fire. You got extremely lucky. I am shooting 70-year-old ammo, and it's very rare to have a dud. Glad you made it through. I think the intent was clear, but I fixed it. Story 35 
A guy pursued me for three years. I couldn't get away from him no matter how hard I tried. But finally, he got sued for harassment and R of multiple women. Story 36. Literally, I was walking back to our barracks in Afghanistan, talking with my peers and my staff sergeant. We got in one part, my staff sergeant grabbed my collar and pulled me back. Right there was an unexploded 40 millimeter grenade projectile from a launcher sitting where my foot was about to land. Big yikes. Good lord, of all the ways to go while in the service. I guess you can never be too careful when you're around a place with battle and stuff going on. Glad you're okay. Story 37. Missed a train by seconds. Got on the one after. The one I missed hit someone. Story 38. X said we can have unprotected intercourse after getting some unfortunate news from her gynecologist. Something felt off. A few years later, she had twins with some guy. Story 39. Went to kill myself by putting a plastic bag over my head and tying it off. Figured it would be less messy to be found. My cat started going crazy on the other side of the door when I started to get lightheaded and feel sort of nauseous. I thought, all right, you need your dinner and no one else will feed you, and I untied the bag to feed the cat. After the fact, I realized my cat literally saved me from one of my lowest points. God, I missed that cat. Still can't believe I came that close. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.